Whether it was hoax images, fake teasers, theory videos, or even fan-made games, the hype leading up to Five Nights at Freddy's 3's release seemed to be boundless on the internet. Seriously, I couldn't escape it back then, and probably neither could you. To the point where many consider it to be the best time to be a FNAF fan. Whatever that really means. Coming off of FNAF 2 and its interesting game design back in 2014, many people wanted to see where this cryptic story could go from here, and if it truly was going to actually end with the next release. Haha. <laughs> Funny. So I wanted to quickly take a deep dive into the heavy speculation surrounding Finance Freddy's 3, starting with, well, one of my favorites. Welcome to Freddy Land. If you were there during the hype for FNAF 3, which was a large majority of the internet back then, this was something you'd see quite often. While it wasn't hard to dismiss this as just simple fan art, many genuinely resonated with the concept for what the third game could be about, which in actuality wasn't too far off, I guess. This image was being shared a lot, primarily in early December of 2014, with some YouTubers even making videos about its legitimacy. The picture itself isn't really anything special, just an amusement park background with the weird rare puppet hallucination kind of just stamped over it. The origin of this teaser is actually kind of funny, as the creator, DangerDude991, simply uploaded the image on DeviantArt as a piece of conceptual fan art before the release of FNAF 3, even including a little excerpt about what this game could possibly be about which, believe it or not, involved the Fazbear Entertainment CEO winning the lottery and investing it all into an amusement park called Freddy Land. This is when a version without the blatant watermark in the corner spread around as a hoax that I guess someone pretending to be Scott posted online. But it honestly didn't really seem like it caught on too well. Besides the cool concept behind it, many fans were not generally fooled by this teaser. Might have something to do with the five. What some people might actually not know is the existence of other teasers for this supposed Freddy Land. Created around the same time as the first one, two other teaser images emerged that were not nearly as popular as its predecessor. With one depicting Bonnie and Chica guarding a generator, and the other showing some sort of game mechanic involving the puppet. Again, it's just cool to see the idea of a game set in an amusement park being passed around at such an early stage in the series. Almost kind of feels like the same thing is still going on a little bit. In fact, a Reddit thread the creator made giving information about the fan-made teaser itself was solely created due to the fact that they thought another fake teaser for Security Breach, specifically named Escape from Fazland, was actually real. Pretty ironic. Before all the eventual FNAF 3 teasers, like the actual ones, not that. Really, the only source of information that Scott gave out on his website was the fact that the third game was, well, actually happening, and the text, 30 years later, only one. It's also important to note that around this time, based purely on speculation from the events of FNAF 1 and 2, thanks to game theory in part, many believe that Phone Guy and the person commonly known as Purple Guy were, well, one and the same. I mean, I don't blame them, there was like only a handful of actual human characters to go off of. One I vividly remember was actually from Daco, who made a video claiming that the killer, or phone guy in this case, who of course died and what he thinks later possessed Freddy Fazbear in FNAF 1, was making his comeback in this game. Which, you know, besides phone guy being purple guy and kind of twisting the animatronic suit he was in, wasn't necessarily too far off. YouTubers in general really started to get popular around this time period too. One being of course Smike. While pretty infamous now, Smike had garnered a huge audience on the platform off of news-related content, fan songs of which he seemed to only really contribute to the video production, and who could forget his legendary top 10 videos. There's actually a theory that BB isn't real, and that he's just a hallucination. Hi. I mean, think about Hello. it. First of all, he doesn't attack you, and so therefore he doesn't- The main reason I bring this guy up is because it's actually how this email leak hoax screenshot thing got disproven. Smike had made a video talking specifically about an email written by Scott saying that the trailer for FNAF 3 would be uploaded on Christmas Day of 2014. But scrolling directly down to the comments, Scott replied confirming that this screenshot was a hoax. I mean, Scott Gotham has like never been good with release dates. Come on now. But definitely one of the more popular fake trailers getting passed around during this time was this fan-made FNAF 3 trailer. Trust me, you probably know the one. In again December of 2014, GLS Machinima, wow, Machinima, or better known now as Golden Lane Studio, would release a fan-made trailer depicting a supposed new look at the next game in the series. The animation itself features the original game's main animatronics hunting the player in a long abandoned mall. More notably, the player navigated a 3D environment, holding a phone monitoring the cameras, and featured much more gore and blood than really anything established in the series up to that point. Kind of funny that the games actually took this approach later on. Of course, it's not the exact same thing, but wandering around a Fazbear-themed mall, hunted by animatronics, with a flashlight... Let's just hope residuals repay. But strangely, one of its most appealing aspects was actually just the thumbnail itself. 
I swear, trying to escape this specific image in late 2014 to early 2015 feels just like when the FNAF Plus image is used for any and every news article talking about the actual series. I mean, even Annoying Orange used the thumbnail when covering the actual FNAF 3 trailer. No, 50. Based on how, I guess, iconic this image is, it spawned many remakes, and eventually the actual video for some reason got an updated thumbnail later on, still trying to keep the spirit of the original. Nowadays, Golden Lane Studio has garnered a large following from doing both FNAF animations and that one Candyland game. Speaking of games, <sighs> this one honestly feels like if you took the first two games and harshly blended them together, of course, including some cut content and a few stolen fan renders sprinkled on top. Thing is, this game sucks ass. Completely disregarding the fact that the doors don't do anything, the music box plays a Slenderman song, and that every animatronic here basically acts the exact same, there really isn't anything interesting about this game, like, at all. But its reach to both YouTubers and general audiences definitely left an impression on what the third game could be about. For me, I vividly remember Corey X Kenshin having a full playthrough of the game on his channel, and even had a moment where he commented on the whole name thing. How is he just gonna name it Five Nights at Freddy's 3? You know, he's just like, I I'll pick up from here, Scott. Don't worry about the rest. Like, if it's a fan-made game, it shouldn't be called Five Nights at Freddy's 3. I guess he he might just be trying to get some attention. But, you know, this is a, still a pretty cool uh, modification. As many know, Scott later directly asked the creator, who was known online as BFP Films, to fully take down the game, which spawned the whole Return to Freddy series. And trust me, I'm not getting into all that. There's already plenty of good videos covering that series' strange history. But I think the way it incorporates a lot of things that people thought would be seen in the next game, while yes, very uncreatively, really puts you into a fan's mindset of a potential FNAF 3. And with these stolen renders, many that were used in the game itself had in turn become synonymous with hoaxes regarding the third game. Along with early versions of Emil Mako's Candy the Cat and an animatronic version of Markiplier, a lot of speculation leaned towards the toy animatronics being destroyed or withered in some fashion for the next game. Specifically coming from user Faz Boggle, a lot of their most popular fan-made renders that many used for content regarding FNAF 3 include both this image of a withered puppet and withered BB. Which, that one specifically also somehow got turned into an actual piece of merchandise. Like, officially. Wow. Regarding hoaxes, there was another popular image of an unwithered Bonnie being shared around this time, that screenshot I mentioned earlier of an email coming from Scott himself, and whatever this was supposed to be. But I'll be honest, I may have believed a few of these back in the day myself. Like, of course I own my easily tricked by fake images license, it comes with the FNAF obsession. While it may have seemed short-lived, creeping into late January where both the official trailer and a few teaser images had already been revealed, players still tried to speculate on a few more aspects of the game. Epic Gaming specifically got very popular from doing exactly this. A channel formed by both Ryan from 8 Ryan and other Ryan, who's now just Baz on YouTube, where they regularly talked about FNAF theories and news. Whether it was saying that this Freddy stand in the office was vitally important, which, by the way, included a really impressive 3D model of Freddy that Ryan actually made, or claiming that Jeremy Fitzgerald was in fact Freddy Fazbear, a lot of their videos honestly didn't get a lot of stuff right. And it's pretty hilarious how serious they used to sound here. As the camera pans, we can see the animatronics in a dormant state. That is, until Bonnie slowly averts her eyes toward the camera and looks directly into it. I also have to talk about this image specifically, being one of the first teasers for the third installment. The image, now of course, is a picture of Springtrap in an admittedly weird pose that really only illuminates half of his upper face. However, with this came a slew of photoshopped images to try and stitch together this guy's full face and sometimes his entire body. Many turned out as well as you'd think, but I feel like as a whole it probably cemented the idea in many people's heads that this was Golden Freddy. But, you know, it wasn't. It was a salvage, or hybrid, maybe Golden Bonnie? Before the name was given to him by Scott on a Steam community post, a majority of the fans online referred to this animatronic as salvage, sometimes also being hybrid or Golden Bonnie. Now, I talked a little bit about these fan-made names in the video on the top right, but I wanted to go a little more in depth here. The idea arose when many teaser images and eventually the full trailer got a good look at the only one animatronic at this new location with the belief being shared among many that this character was made of existing parts from other animatronics. And I feel the name Golden Bonnie is kind of self-explanatory. And honestly, I think that covers most of it. 
The release of FNAF 3 on March 2nd of 2015, while still decisive in its actual quality, was really exciting to see take place in real time. In fact, it's still my personal favorite game in the series to this day, and I think the hype leading up is a huge part of that reason. I can definitely see how this could be some people's best times to be a FNAF fan, simply out of the fun speculation, theorizing, and other related content. Believe it or not, the gap between the games here only spanned around 100 days, 111 to be exact, but I still feel like it was so monumental to the series' impact on the internet as a whole. I mean, just look at where these YouTubers I mentioned are at today. Well, besides that one.